Hi! Welcome to the Virginia Beach Public Library's on-demand videos. I'm Natasha, an adult program specialist here at VBPL. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a faux hardcover notebook like one of these. For this project, you'll need one to two canvas boards or chipboards, depending on the size you want, some decorative paper, a pencil, a ruler, scissors, an X-Acto knife, tacky glue, a sponge brush, a needle and thread or embroidery floss, duct tape, optionally some wax or parchment paper, some clamps, large binder clips, or just some large heavy books, and a lot of whatever kind of paper you want inside your notebook. First, get out your decorative paper. Pick out the paper you want to appear on the outer covers as well as the paper you want to appear on the end papers. End papers are the blank pages at the start and end of the book, and they're usually colored or patterned. I'll be using this design for my exterior and this design for my end papers. At the same time, it's a good idea to decide what color duct tape you want to use. I like to pick a color that either accents the cover design, like this black maybe, or a color that highlights the central color of it, like the yellow. I'm going to go with black today because I think the contrast looks interesting. Since this takes the longest time, we want to work on the inside of our notebook first. We need to make sure the filler paper is the right size. Depending on what kind of filler paper you have, you might need to trim it. In either case, each piece of paper needs to measure twice the width of your completed notebook by the height. Since my notebook is going to be 5 inches by 8 inches, this means my filler paper needs to be 10 inches by 8 inches. This goes for your end papers too, but set them aside for now. Once all the paper is the right size, we're going to turn the pieces into signatures. A signature is made up of a handful of pieces of paper folded in half. You can think of it as a book within your book. Using signatures to make your notebook helps to keep the pages nice and even. Take three or four pieces of paper at a time and fold them in half widthwise. I'm just setting them off to the side in a little pile as I finish them. Get your end papers and fold them in half the same way, but with the design on the inside. Keep them separate. Now this is probably the most time consuming part. We need to sew all of these signatures together. Stack your signatures together in a nice even pile. Put one end paper on the top and one on the bottom like a book sandwich. Measure and draw four equidistant lines right down the folds. I'm drawing my lines at the one, three, five, and seven inch marks. If you're making a larger notebook, you might need to add more, or you can make two if you're making a very small notebook. Either way, make it an even number. Take one signature at a time and fold it the opposite way so that the mark you drew on the fold is now on the inside. Punch a hole at the site of each mark. For this step, you can use your needle, but if your signatures are thicker, or if your needle is thinner, or if you just find it easier, you can use a very small hole punch, a pair of jewelry pliers, an awl, or anything like that. You can even use your scissors. I'm using a bead reamer. Once you've got all your signatures scored, you can finally sew it all together. Thread your needle. Start on the outside of the end paper at the bottom of the stack and push in. Pull it out at the next mark. Push it in through the third and out through the fourth. Hold the first signature and line it up with the end paper. Thread the needle through the nearest mark on your signature. Pull it back out through the second mark. Now thread it back in through this mark on your end paper. 
pull it through this one, and then back up and into the signature again. Loop your thread through your very first stitch, and then add your second signature. Continue with the same pattern until you've sewn all your signatures together. The diagram in the corner shows the order in which you should sew. Just one last step and then our interior is done. Take your binder clips or clamps or set your stack of paper on a table and weigh it down with something big, flat, and heavy. You know what's perfect for this? Another big book. If you're putting it on a table, put some wax or parchment paper down underneath it and line it up with the edge of the table. Make sure the seam of your stack is facing you. Apply a generous amount of tacky glue to the seam, then spread it on with your sponge brush. You want to make sure you can't see any gaps in the glue. Tacky glue is great for this step because it keeps the paper together while still being, well, tacky enough that you'll be able to turn your pages easily. Now just let it dry. I like to let it dry overnight just to be safe. While our interior is drying, we can work on the front and back covers of the notebook. This is where you can get really creative. Take your canvas boards. If you need to cut them down to the size you want, go ahead and measure what you need to and cut it out with your X-Acto knife. Mine's nice and easy. Since my canvas board is eight inches by 10 inches, I just have to cut it in half. Usually you can get to a point where you can kind of fold it in half and get it to split apart. One side might look a little messy, but you'll see soon that it doesn't really matter. Put these aside for now. Get out the decorative paper you picked for your covers. You'll need something a little larger than the end dimensions of your notebook. I'm using 12 inch by 12 inch scrapbook paper, which has been perfect for every notebook I've made so far. Get one of your canvas pieces and place it down on the back of your decorative paper. Use your pencil to trace its outline. Measure an inch and a half to two inches out from each side and trace that shape. Then cut the whole thing out. Fold the corners inward and back, then cut along the fold lines. Don't throw these little triangular pieces out yet because I'll show you something you can do with them a little later. Place just the tiniest bit of pressure on your X-Acto knife to create shallow score lines along the inner rectangle. We're not cutting the whole way through the paper, just making a groove so the paper is easier to fold. Use your sponge brush to spread glue all over the back of your paper. I'm just using the same tacky glue as I did for the inside of the notebook. Place the canvas board inside the outline you traced before. Wrap the edges around and press them into place. And repeat all that for the other cover. I'm making both my covers the same way, but you might want to do something cool and unique to make the front and back covers look different from each other. We're almost done! Get your filler paper and let's put everything together. Put a little wax paper between the first two pages following the first end paper, and the last two pages before the last end paper. Glue the end papers to the front of the first page and the back of the final page.
give that a little bit to dry. If you want, you can take some of the triangular pieces you cut out earlier and glue them in the corners of the front and back interior covers. This way you can cover up any gaps you might have. Now glue the very first end paper to the inside of your front cover and your very last end paper to the inside of your back cover. For another optional step, you can put your triangular pieces in the corners of your interior covers after you've glued the end papers to them. I think it makes the notebook look really neat. Finally, measure just enough duct tape to span the height of your notebook. If your notebook is really thick, you might need another piece of tape. Place the tape along the glue seams and wrap it around the front and back so it creates sort of a spine. I recommend securing it even more by adding another layer or two of tape. And there it is! You've created your very own faux hardcarver notebook. We hope you've enjoyed learning to make this notebook. Tag us on social media and show us what you made. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content from VVPL. Thanks for watching.